Well, good evening, everybody. Today is the second midweek service as we make our way through mid our, our midweek services in Advent. Uh, we're going to be transitioning from looking at our Lord being born in us today, giving us blessing. That's what we did last week. Now to being born in us today, giving us this renewal, bringing us renewal into our soul. So all the readings and everything will be focused on our Lord continuing to move to us, encouraging us, equipping us with what we need to face the day's challenges. Uh, before we do get started, just as always, just a couple of reminders. Make sure that you grab the week at a glance, the, the announcements that are coming through, especially if you haven't gotten the newsletter for December and the calendar that goes along with it. There's a lot going on, especially right now. We have the women's night that's coming up next week along with the wild game feed. The following weekend, there's the cookies and caroling event, and so it just continues to snowball as we get closer and closer uh, to Christmas, and then Christmas Day, and then New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, Epiphany service, and just keeps going. So make sure you have your eye on the calendar. One thing is, is you probably got an email from me or maybe saw on, a, on the Facebook post that uh, there was somebody going around impersonating me, sending text messages to individuals, asking them to discreetly give them money and not to talk about it and only correspond with them via text messages. That's not me. Um, I'm not going to ask you for money via text messages or gift cards or wire transfers or anything like that. So, and I'll, I'll, I'll always respond and call you and talk to you. I will not only talk to you through text messages. So, so that's a dead giveaway too. So make sure that you see that and recognize that. And if uh, you hear anything from people that you know out there, let them know that that's going on too. It's something that does happen from time to time with pastors and church leaders and and uh, things like that, they, especially this time of the year. They, they know that individuals, that pastors are doing a lot of benevolence work right now, so, and they know their congregation knows about that, and so they think that they can exploit, exploit that generosity. So just a heads up on that. We're going to start our service today on the top of page two with our opening hymn, On Jordan's Banks, The Baptist Cry, and we're going to be standing on the final verse.
We begin this evening in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We light the second candle on Advent, the Advent wreath, to celebrate the renewal of our lives through faith in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul writes, we were buried, therefore, with Christ by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today, for you are our hearts and minds and the power of the Holy Spirit, so that we may serve you by serving us. Confident in the blessing of renewal. Let us confess our sins and ask God for forgiveness. My God, we confess to you that we are not all of the goodness of life that is ours in Jesus. We fall back into our selfish ways. We do not love others as we should. Instead of following your will, we seek to conform our lives to the world's temptations. Have mercy on us and forgive us. God had mercy on us and sent his son to be our savior. Jesus took our sins unto himself and suffered and died on the cross for us. Therefore, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help us, Lord, to live in newness of life. Lead us to seek your will so that we might do what is good, acceptable, and perfect in your sight. We continue by seeing verse 4 of Town of Bethlehem. Almighty God, when the time was right, you fulfilled your promise and sent your Son to be our Savior. Even his holy name, Jesus, means that he came to save his people from their sins. Through faith in our crucified and risen Lord, we have forgiveness for our sins and the gift of eternal life. We are buried with him in baptism and raised again to walk with him in newness of life. Help us in order that new life, to walk in love as Jesus did and to serve you by serving others. When we grow faint and weary in our walk of faith, lift us up and renew our strength in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hear our prayers and accept our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite the children forward for today's children's message. Come on up, guys. All right. Lily, are you coming up to say, sit by me today? Oh, come on. I slipped. Oh, you slipped, I know, but you're okay. All right. So how many of you guys like to play at recess? You like to play? What kind of things do you like to play at recess? Legos. Legos? You have Legos at recess? I, I, I love I love Do you like one? Oh yeah, do you like? Do you guys like tunnel slide? Tunnel slide. I like the tunnel slide too. Playing football. I do. What do you? I do. I do. Go to the playground. I do. 
You like going on the playground? Yeah. All right, well, have a seat. So do you guys play really hard on recess? Yeah. yeah. And what happens when you are so, you're playing so hard and you come back inside? What's one thing that would, would taste really good, right, when you get done running really hard? Strawberries? Okay. Lunch? A watermelon? Water. How many of you guys, how many of you guys like water when you're... You're like, well, can you, yeah, you do like, all right. You went on a water slide? Well, even when we're on water slides, we get really tired and we work really hard and it tastes really good to have some water, doesn't it? What, and what, why do you think we need water? Because, yeah. To stay hydrated. Our body needs it, right? What would happen if we didn't drink any water? You'd get a headache. Yeah, it sounds like that was his theory. And what happens when you get dehydrated? You get really tired, maybe. Maybe even get sick. So drinking water is really important. It, it makes us strong. It continues to renew us, right? Yeah, you can lay down on the slides. Well, let's talk about the water for a second. After we drink that water, we get renewed, right? What do you think that means, to be renewed? Maybe to have more strength? Maybe to be able to go on more slides. Maybe to be able to play a little longer on the, on the playground. What if I told you that Jesus comes to you and he gives you something that's a lot like that water, but instead of just helping you out with your body, he helps you out with your soul. With encouraging you and strengthening you so that even when you get sad or your feelings get hurt or maybe you... Maybe you feel sorry for some of the things you did. He comes to you just like that water. Just like that water and makes you new again. Does that sound like something that Jesus would do? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Because he, he does do just that. He comes to you through his word and he reminds you that your sins are forgiven. He tells you that you're his child. That no matter what happens in your entire life, he will never leave you. He'll always hold you in his arms He'll always carry you. He'll always strengthen you. And so when there's times in your life when you feel really tired, especially with your mind or your heart is really sad, we run to Jesus. Because when our heart is sad, thank you very much. When our mind is sad, maybe even when our bodies are sad, Jesus continues to strengthen us. He continues to renew us every day. Here, sit down here. All right. Will you guys pray with me? Let's fold our hands, all right? Repeat after me. Are you going to pray? All right, come sit right here. Let's fold our hands. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for renewing me, for forgiving me, being with me always, and making me strong. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, you can return back to your seats. As they return back to their seats, we continue with seeing Long Expected Jesus, verse 1. Our first reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31, and, and in it you can see the backdrop of the history of Israel. Isaiah telling the Israelites about the captivity that they're going to fall into, being led away in chains into the sounds of the crack of a whip, to have their rich be carried away. And 
And looking into that moment, God inspiring him to speak words of encouragement, that not all is lost, that they still have the concern and the attention of the Lord who hangs the stars. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and in inhabits, inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? That I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the heavens or the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases his strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary. Young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Ephesians 1 reminds us why it is that we can be encouraged, be strengthened, what it is that we have that continues to nourish us regardless of the circumstances of our life, and it is the fact that we have been called into fellowship and reconciliation with our Lord in heaven. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth. O Lord, have mercy on us. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and saying, Joseph, son of God, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. O Lord, have mercy on us. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. Drawn from the Scriptures. We confess our common faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, open up our hearts to hear, and through thy word to us draw near. Let us thy word ever pure retain. Let us your children and your heirs remain. Amen. You know, one of the things about Advent, oftentimes we're just so anxious to get from Advent to Christmas. Even when we sing the songs like we've been doing these last couple weeks, they're great songs, but they don't carry that robust emotion or at least that joy that we're so longing for for Christmas. Songs like Joy to the World, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, the whole holy night, little town of Bethlehem, it came upon a midnight clear. These are the songs that we want to get to. The songs and the words that display the glory of God, that sing about the happiness of God's people, the joy that comes into our lives because we know the inheritance that is ours, because of the blood-bought forgiveness of this child born in this manger, we want to get there. But have you actually stopped and read the lyrics of some of those great carols? Oh, holy night, talking about a thrilling joy over a weary world. Or it came upon a midnight clear, talking about, yes, the angels singing, unfurling their wings, and the glory of their song covering, again, a weary world. A world that is also described in a holy night as pining away in sin. Is that really a good description of of where we are? pining away in our sin, weary, destitute, struggling, faint. 
I actually think that if we want to take a good survey of ourselves, being weary and faint is, is actually a pretty good description of where we find ourselves this time of the year. I don't know about you, but, but when you look at the struggle that we're in, all the different obligations that come our way, the different recitals and the performances and the traveling and the obligations that we're expected to have, Sure, it was really nice when maybe it was just the two of you or the, the one of you in your house, but then you had kids, and then they had kids, and then they got married, and now there's 60 of you, and now you've got to travel halfway across the country, and there's all these gifts you have to buy, and that means that with the rising cost of everything, somehow you've got to come up with money to be able to get everybody what's on their wish list. All of a sudden, that anxiety continues to just boil over, and we get weighed down by it. We try to keep a happy face about it. But all of these extra stressors that come during this time of the year, they're just added on to the things that we experience every day, like that continued mortgage payment that comes. It's not like December magically makes that disappear. The power bill continues to come in the mail as well, and so is that nasty health bill that you had to pay back in August and now are on a payment plan for because it costs a little bit more than you thought it was when you went into the ER. And if we would just take away the financial burdens, take away the obligations from our family and the expectations of what this time of the year might bring with the different celebrations. There's a whole myriad of other things that weigh us down every single day. Like worrying about our kids. You know, when we had the kids at first, it was a no-brainer that we would worry about them, worry about what they would do, what they would eat. We'd hold their hand when they'd teach them how to walk. But no one told us that when they're 50 or 60 or 70, we're still worrying about what might happen to them. That no matter how old our kids get, we're constantly still their parents, constantly praying and worrying about what might come this year. What health concern are they going to experience? What downturn? What circumstance? What crisis? how powerless we are to be able to help them now. There's one thing when we could put a Band-Aid on what hurt. But now we don't even know what to say. I think the writers of the carols got it right. They got it right. This world is weary, and we are all experiencing it in a variety of different ways. Whether it's our physical well-being or spiritual well-being, our emotional and mental well-being or a combination and a conglomeration of all of it just continuing to push down all in time for the sun to go down at 4 o'clock and not get up till 8. We do find ourselves weary, downtrodden, heavy laden, desiring some rest. I think it was apt that those carol writers brought that up and I think it's more than that inspired that Isaiah speaks these words from chapter 40 to the people of Israel. Israel begin, or Isaiah begins his prophecy by prophesying to all the people in Israel because they are walking around in glamorous attire. Life is easy. No one is threatening them. They are wealthy, and, and, and they have grown up in homes that, that have described the accomplishments of God and the, the mastery and the victories of the armies of Israel. Can you imagine growing up in a home that around festival days you heard? You heard about the conquest of Canaan. How the judges arose and the armies fell. How the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. How Goliath was slain with one stone from King David. And then all the campaigns of him and his son Solomon. And then the majesty, the ornate beauty of the temple of Solomon there at the epicenter of your main town. No wonder that they were full of pomp and ease. But it wouldn't be long until even their rich and wealthy and and royalty would be led away in chains and held in captivity. Their families would be separated, and tears would be what replaces their shouts of pride. They needed to hear these words from Isaiah. 
Have you not heard? Do you not know that the Lord is with you? You know, it's, it's one thing for someone to come to you and tell you when you're sad, cheer up. It's one thing for someone to tell you when you're struggling, you know what, just bear down, pull up your bootstraps, and try harder. It's one thing for someone to direct their attention to you when you're struggling and tell you what you need to do to get yourself out of it, but not for Isaiah. That's not what he does. He tells us why we can be at ease as we are weary and heavy laden and struggling in this life. It's not because we can look deep down in ourselves and find a way out. It's not because we can pull up our bootstraps or just try a little harder. It's because the Lord of hosts, the Lord of army is with us. The one who takes the stars and holds them by his hand and places them in the sky and knows them by name who tells the oceans to hear and know further, who knows every place of every lightning strike, and more than that, every hair on your head. That is the God who is walking beside you and carrying you through every single episode of your life, every trial, every circumstance, every time that we're wrestling feeling weary and faint because of the obligations that are pressed on us, that we feel like we're just not enough bread, butter spread on too much toast. All those times our Lord moves to us and speaks words of comfort and hope, encouragement, reminds us that our struggles are not beyond His interest, that our pain isn't our pain isn't beyond His sight. No, our Lord comes to us even when we're worrying about our children or our spouses or our own health. And He reminds you that, that the one who created you, who formed you in your mother's womb, whose every day, your every day was written in the book of His life, uh, in, the, in the book of life, that He tenderly cares for each moment and gives you exactly what you need. God doesn't come to us and, and take all of our burdens, make it so that life is easy. He comes to us and strengthens us. He gives us the ability to endure, the ability to hope beyond what eyes can see to be able to look past the struggles of this life and to see Him holding us up like wing, like on wings of eagles and carrying us from one moment to the next, telling us and reminding us that your identity is not yoked to the circumstances of this life, but your identity is tied in, tied into your baptismal identity where you were united to Jesus' very own death and resurrection. That no matter what happens or befalls you in this life, height or depth, angel or demon, power, nakedness, famine or sword, even death itself, none of it can separate you from God's love in Christ. I think the carols had it right, and I also think oftentimes that beautiful hymn that we have, what a friend we have in Jesus, we need to run to as well. Because what needless cares do we bear? What peace we often forfeit? All because we don't take our cares and our burdens to our Lord who, who stands. And every day, every morning, every night echoes the words from Matthew eleven twenty eight: Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you peace rest. This statue is replicated around the world in a variety of different places. Cathedrals, churches, all sorts of places, monasteries, even job, John Hopkins Uni University Hospital. Right there standing over the doors as you walk into it, this is the statue called Christus Counselor. 
And underneath it is engraved those words from Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. This statue is to serve for all of us to remember that our crucified and risen Lord continues to come to you with outstretched arms, inviting you to place your burdens on Him. Those hands that are outstretched for you are the hands that are pierced, the side that is torn open. It is Him and His mercy that continues to reach out every single day. As I've been saying on Sunday, said last week, the The event of Christ coming is not a a once-in-a-history event. It is a repetitive experience as our Lord moves to you each day, holds you up, and gives you strength. And that, that encouragement and that peace that we have, knowing that no matter what we face, we are never alone, that the God of hosts, the God who created everything is with us, That peace is what we also get to offer those that we see. You know, those that we run into on those family events, those 60 family events that we might have to go run and jump through to get to all around the country, through those cards that we wrote about that I talked about on Sunday, phone calls, Facebook posts, emails, all of it. Will we be able to get to everyone this Christmas? Will you be able to share peace with everyone you see and impregnate every conversation with the gospel message? Probably not. But for the ones that you do, it will make a difference. There's a, an old story that talks about two men walking on the beach. It was right after a massive storm that came through the area. They were walking on the beach, and the the beach was just full of sea stars or starfish, however you want to describe them. And one man immediately began running, running over to these starfish, and he just kept throwing them back into the ocean, one after another. And he was frantically working. Well, his friend finally stopped him and said, what in the world are you doing? And he said, I have to throw these starfish back into the ocean. And the man said, look at how many starfish there are. There are absolutely no way that you're going to be able to get all these starfish back into the ocean. What difference is it going to make? And as he throws another one into the ocean, he says, to that one, it made a difference. Oftentimes, we want large results. And the measure of success from a worldly and humanistic standpoint, kind of derails us and discourages us. But we can't forget for the one conversation, the one seed that we plant, the one person that we can encourage with the hope of Christ, the renewal of the Spirit that was born in Bethlehem on Christmas morning, we cannot underestimate the difference it makes for that one person. Because even the vaults of heaven resound in joy when one sinner repents. May our week and our celebration, and yes, even our family gatherings, be full of renewal this Advent and Christmas. And all of God's people said, Amen. We continue to worship our Lord through our tithes and offerings.
continue with singing the remaining verses of O oh Lord, how shall I meet you? Please stand for prayer. <clears throat> Lord and Savior, hear our prayers on behalf of those who are suffering through illness or enduring grief and loss. Renew and strengthen them in faith through the promise of your, through of your holy word, holy child of Bethlehem. Be born in us today. Lead us as brothers and sisters of Christ to serve one another in love and bring comfort and hope to those in need. Lord and Savior, in baptism we were united to you in your death, buried with you and raised to new life. Through faith in your name, we have forgiveness and eternal life. Holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. Conform our hearts and minds to your will. So that by our thoughts, words, and actions, we glorify your holy name. Lord and Savior, you are ever watchful and caring, and you are present with us at all times. When we grow faint and weary in faith, forgive us and renew us according to the promise of your word, holy child of Bethlehem. Be born in us today. Holy Savior, Lord of all nations, hear our prayer and accept our grateful praise. Amen. As we approach you in confidence, hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. The 
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. 